In the early hours of Tuesday, 6 September 1927, a tragedy occurred at Oban Harbour. Built in 1885 by James and George Thompson of Clyde Bank, the McBrain-owned pleasure paddle steamer Grenadier was moored at the harbour, close to the North Pier. Its former captain, Archibald MacArthur, had not long retired as he was 76 years old and a younger captain, Mr McLean, had taken over the boat. MacArthur, who had over 50 years of service, was helping him by showing him how the vessel worked as it sailed between Oban and the Western Isles. That day, the boat had been out at Staffa and Iona, and on her return had berthed in her usual place. The crew had all turned in and headed to their beds. The twenty were soon sound asleep, but around one o'clock in the morning, the watchman Alexander Nicholson discovered a fire in the galley. At one thirty, there was a large explosion, and the boat burst into flames. A rocket being set off at the police station to raise the alarm for the fire brigade to come woke the people in the neighbourhood, and the sight that greeted them was terrifying. The whole steamer was engulfed in flames, with thick smoke billowing from the gangways. Many made their way to the quayside, with some hotel and boarding house guests rushing out in just their night clothes to see what was happening. By this time, the steamboat agent Angus Kerr was on the pier and began directing operations to try and rescue those on board. At the same time the siren was sounded at the police station, Sergeant Dewar and Police Constable Macmillan were on patrol at Tweeddale Street and immediately knew something was wrong. When they reached Argyle Square, they could see the flames and rushed to the scene, where they also helped in directing the rescue efforts. Once roused, the men on board tried to flee to safety, but the fire had engulfed the stairway. Captain McLean tried to find Captain MacArthur to rouse him, but he couldn't find him. At that point, the men knew they'd have to run through the flames to get to safety. After they reached the shore, some by boats and other by ropes, they soon discovered a number of men were still on board, including MacArthur. Desperate attempts were made to rescue MacArthur and the other two crewmen, 18-year-old cook's boy Kenneth McRae from Salon on the Isle of Mull and 21-year-old Albert Horsborough, the ship's steward, from Glasgow. Rescuers tried to break the portholes at the cabins with hatchets and axes, as they were too small for the men to fit through, but it was to no avail. There was no way out, and in the end, all three men perished. McRae's body was found on the first deck, while on the Wednesday, James Gush, a diver, found Horsborough's charred remains in the forecastle. Around a half an hour after the alarm had been raised, the fire brigade under Firemaster Lawson arrived and began dousing the flames, bringing the fire under control reasonably quickly. It was shortly after their arrival that Captain MacArthur was seen making his way to the flaming gangway, but after staggering he was forced back and at that moment was caught by the force of the fire. He was then seen to collapse, then was completely engulfed by flames. His body was later found in the port paddle wing of the boat. McLean was also thought to have died until his figure appeared through the flames. He jumped into the water but was badly burned. Four other men also suffered burns when they rushed to safety. They were David Green, James Kirkness, Ronald Heffernan and John Stewart. 
At first they were taken to the Marine Hotel and after Dr. Curry attended to them were taken to the McKelvey Hospital but made a full recovery, with Green and Heffernan only being slightly injured. Miss Nan MacLeod, who helped to apply the dressings initially, was singled out for being so quick to respond to their burns. Deckhand David Green managed to rouse the rest of the crew who were sleeping in the forecastle by battering the bulkhead. Although at that stage he was uninjured, he was overcome by the fumes and also taken to hospital. Had it not been for him, many more men would have died that night. Later, one of the crew spoke of how there was no time to think. It looked as though they were all going to be trapped, so they rushed through the flames in what they thought was the direction of the gangway. Dougald Cameron, a deckhand from Millport, said he and the second engineer were in the stern when the alarm sounded. There was only the two of them in the small cabin and they'd been sound asleep. The engineer woke him, knowing something was wrong, and told him the ship was ablaze. They called for a small boat. By this time the fire was spreading rapidly astern and their passage was blocked. With no boat in sight, they thought they were going to die a terrible death. They then managed to launch a life raft, but at that moment a boat appeared alongside with two injured stewards, and they made good their escape. By this time the steamer had begun to sink and soon was under water. She was refloated on 13th September and towed by Flying Falcon to Greenock on the 22nd, where she was declared a total loss. On 11th May 1928, her hulk was towed to Ardrossan and broken up. Her boilers, however, survived and were reused, and her figurehead was saved. The cause of the devastating fire was unknown, but it was the rapidity of the fire spreading that really shocked people. Captain MacArthur's funeral was held on Friday 9th September and he was interred in the Eastwood New Cemetery in Glasgow. Albert Horsborough was buried in Cathcart New Cemetery the following day. McRae's body was returned to Salin on the SS Lochinver on Wednesday 7th September. At the pier, when the coffin was being transferred from the hearse to the steamer, a large number of people stood in silence with their heads bowed. On top of his coffin were several wreaths. He was buried on Mull on Friday, 9th September. If you enjoyed this episode of Scotland's History, please like, comment and subscribe. Until next time, thank you for watching.